Hello people, I waited quite some time to make this video, but it's finally here. And today, I'm gonna tell you how I made over 50% selling Pokemon singles, not just by turning and burning, but trying to predict the future, see what cards have the best potential, actually buying them, waiting to sell them, and then be here being able to tell you how I did it. Now. I already show some proofs of, for instance, I'm thinking about the Evotals that I sold. I will leave you some screenshots of, uh, you know, some Evotals, some Groudons. By the way, this is all that's left of the Groudons that you saw in the thumbnail. So that is my proof. As you can see, those were uh, car market transactions. Some transactions were made on car market. Some others were made on eBay. Now, you have, you know, to be fair, it doesn't take a good uh, graphic designer to make up those screenshots. However, I've been updating some people in the Discord about my purchases. I've been a bit advocate of a few cards that I mentioned on the channel. So you are free to believe me or not, but I did it. And today I'm going to tell you how I did it. Now, what I'm going to tell you today doesn't mean that you're going to do the same and at least try to do the same and uh, you're going to have the same results. As I always preach in the channel, Past performance is never indicative of future performance. If you've looked any financial piece of content, if you went to your local bank, if you went to you know an investment banker, at the end of every white paper they leave you, you'll read past performance is never indicative of future performance, unlike what some other people try to make you believe. Now, down to how I did it. Well, uh, there were some rules which I'm gonna tell you today and they're no secret to the average Timmy like myself. However, they are not what some, you know, the best investment cards you can buy right now usually tell you. Many times they're the opposite. So let's get started. Rule number one, it had to be a popular Pokemon. Think about the Groudon. How is Groudon not popular? Think about the Evotals. Think about the Metagross. Think about the Altaria, which I also had uh, a good performance on. Now, my best performers were the Groudon and the Evotals. Altaria was very close. Now, with the Groudon, I was able to make over 100% on all of them. I bought eight. With the Evotals, I was able to make 100%. I'm talking about net profit after fees, which are much less in the EU than in the US. Sorry for you, my American viewers. And uh, again, rule number one, the Pokemon must be popular. People must like that Pokemon. With popularity comes demand. I mean, they're literally the same thing. Popularity means demand. Rule number two, market death. What does it mean? Well, if you've been around the channel, I develop a bot with my own hands and brain and a little bit of help of ChatGPT, even though you, you need to know what you're asking ChatGPT, to be fair. Um, I coded a bot and that bot extracts European data. I save European data and I'm able to see how the market evolves. Now, what I'm able to look at for that data is the number of copies available for a card at a given time. I'm able to see within a certain price range, how many copies of that card are available, what I like to call volume and I'm able to see what I like to call dot frequency, and that's with a function within the bot, which is available for free just by joining the Discord. And dot frequency will, as the name say, plot dots. Every dot corresponds to a listing. It will tell you, looking at the dot, you will see how many cards are in the listings and the price. On the x axis, you will have the price. On the y axis, you will have the number of cards. One dot is one listing. Now, why am I saying that? Well, when it comes to look for popular cards, what I also look for is I look for where volume is. Where is the most number of card available at? What is the price point? I can buy the most number of cards. Now, for all of these, what they had in common, I was able to buy multiple copies from one seller. Why is that important? Well, if you're in the US, you may not care as much. And it comes down to shipping. Shipping in the EU is much more expensive 
than in the US. Hence, if you want to buy, you know, 10 cards from 10 different sellers, most likely you're going to pay more in shipping than the card itself. So I wanted to focus on being able to get the most amount of cards from the same seller. And I also wanted to look at where the other, you know, where the volume was, where the other cards were available, at what price you had the most number of cards available. That is what I call market death. And that is a very powerful tool that you almost never hear about. Now, TCG Play just implemented the volume, the sales volume. That is a magnificent tool that is available. And I do not see people talking about it. That is such a powerful tool that is so overlooked on. Now, rule number four, artwork. Now, that is subjective. However, if you combine a popular Pokemon with what appears to be a great artwork, you have another piece of information that will add to your potential guess. Now, again, that is subjective. However, what I found to hold true, when you want to judge the artwork, the best way to do it is unfortunately, once you have the card in your hands, once you're able to look at the card with your own eyes, that's when you're able to, to tell. And again, that's subjective. That's going to be the only subjective rule from this list. That's when you can tell when you feel that is a good artwork or not. Unfortunately, that's subjective. So it might have been luck. It might have not been luck. I don't know. But that's another thing I look for. Now, rule number five, poor rates. How is that important? If you th think about it, my best performing cards were the Groudon, the Evil Tals, and the Altaria. That's where I had the most gains. What do those cards have in common? Well, Groudon and Evil Tals are both IRs. IRs from Paradox Rift have the toughest pull rates within the Scarlet and Violet era so far, it's alongside Pull the Evolved. That is pull rates for a specific illustration rare because there's so many illustration rares it's so hard to pull a specific one. So what I do with that piece of information is I look at previous sets or past sets, depending on what set I'm looking for. So I look at our sets with different pull rate data. I try to compare. Okay, so I have a Groudon, then I have a Ghastly from Temporal Forces that is about twenty dollars, twenty euros, and that Ghastly, however, is much easier to pull than the Groudon. So how come the Groudon is at 25, 30 euros when it's harder to pull. Could we say they're both popular Pokemon? We could say that. Could we say both artworks are pretty stunning? We could say that. So that's another characteristic I look for when I make this decision. Now, rule number six, do the opposite or what no other PokeTuber tells you to do. Now, that could be controversial. Some of you may go, oh, Barry, just shut the F up already. Well, think about it. I even made I made a reaction video about it. Evil Tolls. You hear people talking about Evil Toll, how that is so good now that it's doubled in three months. It's up above $10, 10 euros, 10 uh, currency units. And people are not talking about it. It looks so undervalued. You buying that card are my liquidity. So I actually think those people trying to, you know, highlight these cards once they spiked because they are bringing liquidity for me that I bought them before the spike. Now, I'm not a genius. Everyone can do it. Some other people might have done it with me. However, when large content creators talk about cards, especially in the investing space, now you may undervalue what a creator that makes thousands of you on a video and tells you oh these are the top under you know the most underrated cards you should buy i mean they won't say you should buy them but these are underrated blah 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 blah. you make thousands of video it takes one person to buy 10 20 cards and it's going to have an influence in the market you may not believe that but when i was buying 10 12 8 copies of the card I was moving the market and I could see that through data. It also creates 
when you buy, you take supply out of the market, you create demand. How is that? So, well, if you buy, people see you buy. So they are starting to, you know, firm up. Oh, look, this car is getting bought. Uh, sh 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 should I jump on this train? Is, is it take, is, no, is this train departing? Is this plane taking off? Are we, are we going higher from here? You take supply out of the market and you generate demand when you make a sale, when you buy. That is microeconomics. Now, but getting back to I do what no one speaks about, because if no one speaks about, no one will watch that particular card, no one will watch that particular item, and that is where undervaluation is. People don't need to see it, people don't need to realize it. Once people realize it, that's where I make the money. Once people realize this was not a $20 card, this was a 50, 60 currency unit card, that's where I made my money. I bought these for 23 euros shipped. I will leave you the screenshot. 23 euros shipped, I bought eight of them. Why was I able to do so? I followed all the rules that I told you about. Maybe some more, I guess we'll never know. And most importantly, no one was talking about it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.